Today, let's rectify your current pedal board tone problems. Weak, thin, mushy, and muddy. Rather than give a list of new things to buy, I'm going to unpack how your existing system may not be optimally set up, resulting in bad tone. That's right, you probably don't need to buy a new gear, which is great for the wallet. Stick around to the end, and I'll share a bonus problem that is preventing you from sounding and playing your best. In my experience, pedal board tone problems can be broadly categorized into two issues. The issue of weak, thin sounding tone and the issue of mushy, muddy tone. By breaking down the problems into smaller steps, you'll be able to troubleshoot and implement small corrective steps that might solve your tone issues without making massive sweeping changes. There's one foundational principle that I want you to know before we get into the nitty gritty. Tone in real life will never be able to match the tone in your imagination. This pedal board is my CCM build that has saturated lead as its primary focus, so it suffers in the area of rhythm tone. It turns out that having the tone saturated and fat is great for single note lead lines, but not so great for chords where we want clarity and articulation. This rig is an epic failure? Not at all. I believe the biggest reason tone chasing never ends is that we want our one rig to do it all, but in reality, we should be building different rigs for different sounds. Now that I've built this rig and dialed it in, I know the sound's possible and will reach for it when the opportunity comes. With that out of the way, let's start with problem number one, weak and thin. And here we are addressing tone that doesn't ring, resonate, the note dies out quickly, and overdrives that seem to make things fizzy instead of introducing power and girth. Your instinct might be to go and buy a compressor and other overdrives, some which are severely overpriced on the second market, and stack them. Not so fast. Let's work backwards. If your objective is to have the tone big and beefy, your existing clean tone needs to be big and beefy. Overdrives don't create body and girth, they enhance whatever's the baseline tone. If your tone is fizzy to begin with, stacking drives is not going to solve the problem. This is why so many metal players have a gained up amp and push it with a mid focus drive like the tube screen for riffs that are crushingly large but are intelligible in the mix. It's going to take the sound that I'm, I have going here, it's going to tighten that up and I want you to listen to it. <laughs> 
said, you need to manage the amount of clean gain in your system. This is gain that doesn't color the tone. It simply takes the guitar signal and amplifies it throughout the system. And we control it at various points in the signal chain with the volume knobs on your pedals. There are two points in the signal path where clean gain directly influences the body of sound. First, and most importantly, before the amp, and secondly, before the overdrives. Your bass amp tone, spelled B-A-S-E, is a critical factor here. For big and beefy clean tone, try turning up the volume of the pedal preceding the amp with enough gain for it to barely start distorting. In my case, I'm using the Strymon Deco for this purpose. clean gain before overdrives. Here's a neat little trick for you to try. If you have a compressor before your drive section, you can use the volume knob of the compressor to tweak the gain reactivity of your drive pedals. This is how I've been using up mine overdrives where I can get different shades of gain from subtle to severe levels. <laughs> start cranking all the volume knobs on your board, hold your horses. If you take it too far, you're going to run into our second problem. Problem number two, mushy and muddy. Maybe you've run into the opposite problem of having too much clean gain cranked in your system. This is particularly true of modelers like the Strymon Iridium and the UA line of pedals, which are too realistic. Too much gain causes the speaker circuit to distort, and it's not a musically pleasing distortion with many people using words like wet farts to describe the sound. experiment. Always incrementally try a change, and if it doesn't work, revert to the previous setting and try something else. Here's where we have two other possible sources of the mushy-muddy problem. Firstly, ensure that there's no mono-stereo mismatching. Modern pedals are marvels of audio engineering. Some pedals have true stereo operation, but have the option of running outputs in mono. And this is where you need to be aware of the dangers of mono-summing in your signal chain. Mono-summing takes the stereo information of the left and right speakers and collapses them into the center. With the modern worship sound needing higher levels of delay and reverb mix and decay, mono-summing these ambient effects is usually a bad idea and results in utter mush.
avoid mono summing where possible. Be clear in your signal path where it's supposed to be mono and where it branches into stereo. In my case, I had to configure my Boss MS3 to run in mono and turn off the onboard reverb since I still had mono delay and reverb after it. Secondly, manage your effects, especially ambient effects like delay and reverb. Here's an unpopular opinion. Use only what you need. Having multiple delay and reverb pedals on a board doesn't mean you have to turn them on all at the same time. In fact, some analog delay sounds and modern delay pedals have such a wonderful lo-fi wash at their tail end that it functions like a full reverb. Want to know a secret? The audio recordings of the Easter Sunday service I served at have no reverb pedal on. I can hear reverb in a guitar. I hear you say, yes, you can, but you're not hearing a pedal. You're hearing the ambience captured from my Insta360 GO 3 camera. The harsh truth is that you're probably already playing in an acoustic environment that has natural reverb in it, like a sanctuary or an auditorium. You don't need a reverb pedal, except as a specialty effect like shimmer or cloud. And if you've watched this far, here's a bonus problem. Control accessibility. I get it. You want to maximize pedal board real estate. That means cramming as many pedals together as possible. I tried doing that and had my external foot switch for the Boss MS3 placed beside the expression pedal. I thought I would be able to angle my foot to enable the wah effect, but check out what happened that Sunday morning. I couldn't reach the switch. I forgot to account for my gigantic feet, which is made worse by my even bigger shoes. What's the point of cramming so many pedals if I'm not able to access them? I've since relocated the switch and it now sits above the expression pedal so that I can reach over with my foot much more easily. I should have realized that this was going to be a problem when my slipper could barely press the switch. Lesson learned. If your slipper is experiencing some difficulty engaging the switch, your formal black shoe definitely won't be able to hit it. In sum, if you have a problem of weak and thin sounding tone, check out how much clean gain is in your system, and you may find that by turning them up in different points of the system, you get a bigger, beefier tone. If you have a problem with mushy, muddy tone, check your ambient effects and ensure you're not accidentally mono summing a stereo pedal, and try turning off any delay or reverb pedals that you don't need. If you've gotten value out of this video, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and check out my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can directly support the channel by getting one of my preset packs and contribute towards getting new gear to feature here. For more of this pedal board, I've previously done a rig rundown and build report video that you can check out after this. See you there.